Hey guys, Levelcap here. Today we've got some gameplay with the brand new Shawshot LMG that's available for the support class in Battlefield 1. This gun is tied into the They Shall Not Pass DLC, so if you get that DLC, you can unlock this weapon, and at the moment, it's available in the Battlefield 1 CTE. Now, I was very interested in trying out this machine gun because it's got different properties than the other ones out there. Every single other LMG in the game does 23 damage maximum. This one does 35 damage maximum, allowing you to three shot people in close quarters, four shot people at up to 30 meters, and everything else is a five shot. It's changing up the design principles of the way that they're balancing LMGs for the support class, and I like it. Artistically, it's also really cool that the open half moon magazine on this weapon actually shows the bullets depleting as you're going through your ammo. You've only got 20 rounds in a magazine, and in real life, the open magazine was actually the biggest problem with this weapon as it allowed a lot of dirt and debris to get into the magazine, and then that would get into the internals of the weapon, causing all kinds of problems and jams while trying to shoot the thing. And the French replaced it as soon as they possibly could. Uh, there's a lot of people that think it was one of the worst weapons ever actually deployed in a war. Fortunately, Battlefield 1 doesn't simulate gun jams. As you can tell by the amount of mud on my weapon right now, it almost certainly wouldn't be firing if this was a real life situation. Also, DICE took a few other creative liberties with the weapon, increasing the rate of fire from the real life rate of fire. The real world rate of fire is 240 rounds per minute, an incredibly slow rate of fire, um, and the one in-game shoots 360 rounds per minute, or rather, according to the SimThick stats, 359 rounds per minute. This makes the gun a little bit more palatable, easier to use, as 240 rounds per minute would have made this weapon fire slower than a lot of the handguns, the pistols in the game. So that would have been kind of a joke and pretty tricky to balance uh, against the other weapons in the game. 360 makes it a much more interesting weapon, and in fact, when it does 35 damage maximum, 360 rounds per minute makes this the second highest damage per second machine gun in the game, with the B. AR being the highest damaging machine gun in the game. However, what's interesting is that even though both this and the BAR have 20 round magazines, the damage potential per mag is much higher with this weapon because of the increased damage per shot. So you have a potential damage of 700 per magazine with this gun, where the BAR only has a 460 damage potential with its magazine. This is a huge benefit to the show shop because it means you don't have to reload it as frequently. You can get multiple kills, follow-up kills before needing to reload the gun. You only have five rounds left in the magazine. That's definitely enough to take down somebody in close quarter. So it's just kind of cool that that weapon has that ability. I've really been enjoying this gun overall. Uh, it might be one of my new favorite support weapons out there as it seems to offer a bit more range potential than the BAR and has almost equivalent close range potential uh, or killing potential as the BAR. Granted, it shoots slower. The BAR is probably a little bit better at getting a single kill in close quarters, but this gun is a lot better at getting multiple kills in close quarters. To unlock the low weight variant of this weapon, you need to get 50 kills with the Lewis gun suppressive and and then you also need to resupply 75 different times. In the menu, there's really not a lot you can customize with this weapon. You have the choice between iron sights and anti-aircraft sights. I prefer the irons. The anti-air sights look pretty bad on this weapon. And then you can choose your magnification and recoil pattern, but that's about it. So you're really only choosing your sights on this gun and then setting it to whatever magnification you prefer. There is also a telescopic variant of this weapon. I haven't unlocked it yet or tested it out. Currently, I'm really enjoying this one. I have a hard time thinking that I'll enjoy a weapon with a magnified sight on it. Uh, or this weapon with a magnified sight on it, but uh, we'll have to wait and see how the other one performs. You may also notice that I'm playing on a totally different map at the moment. This is Fort de Vaux. It just came out on CTE. This is one of the four new maps in the upcoming They Shall Not Pass DLC. It's a really cool looking map. If you like trenches and corridors, the best way I can describe this map is like an Operation Lockers but uh, just three times as bigger and not linear. It's sort of a circular map design, so a lot of the flanking routes are not gonna get too clustered, and uh, it gives you a lot of options to sort of 
get around the enemy. You don't have to just stalemate at one or two choke points the whole round. There's a lot of different fr flanking routes. I really like the map design. I think the Conquest game mode has some flaws with it that makes the combat on this map not quite as good as it could be. Too many people are just clumping up on the flag points, which have very small capture radiuses and just sitting there and waiting a lot. And often you'll kind of miss the combat. So a lot of my good clips were when I was just like, screw it, I'm not gonna wait around on this flag with 20 other people waiting for the cap to go, I'm gonna go find some action. And that's when I actually found the best combat on this map is when I stopped PTFOing, uh, it became much more enjoyable. Now as for the strengths and weaknesses of this machine gun, I'd say 20 to 30 meters is really the sweet spot for this gun. That's where you wanna try and get as much action as possible. It can hold its own in close quarters though. It's got actually decent hip fire accuracy, so you can definitely take somebody down uh, shooting from the hip, but because of its magazine capacity, uh, you're probably not gonna wanna rely on it too much for chewing through tons and tons of baddies in total close quarters. 20 to 30 meters is where you're gonna start out damaging most of the people on the map. Once you start going beyond that, the accuracy of this weapon starts to break down a bit, um, and also your damage per second isn't as impressive. Uh, it remains to be seen if the optical variant or the telescopic variant of this weapon will do better at those further ranges, as it should be a little bit more accurate. It does come with a bipod. I found it moderately useful. I kind of ended up using it more like I would the new um, uh, assault classes bipod, where if I found myself near a ledge or something, I would prop the bipod up real quick to use it there. But uh, other than that, I wasn't really going prone much with this weapon. I found it to be perfectly acceptable from a standing position. Now, based on the size um, and ergonomics of this weapon in real life, that's probably a very unrealistic way of using the gun. It was probably mostly fired from a bipoded situation, but uh, nonetheless, it is still a lot of fun to use in Battlefield 1. And considering how much liberty this game takes with the realistic aspect of World War 1, I think it's totally fine to use this weapon uh, from a standing position. It has a short reload of 2.9 seconds, which is only marginally longer than the BAR. So if you're used to using that weapon in close quarters, it's not too bad overall. 2.9 seconds can be a little bit on the long side though, when people are rushing your position. But then again, that's just Battlefield and you're probably gonna die to a lot of reload situations regardless. Taking the show shot over to the Soissons map, which is much more open and vehicle oriented, is a bit of a change of pace. Uh, the gun still fares pretty decently, again, at the ranges that I mentioned before, but even longer ranges, it can hold its own, uh, especially against um, medics or assault classes, it's got no problem. Uh, your biggest threat, as always with the support class, is probably snipers that are just looking to make an easy meal of you, but you do have the option to try and suppress them down and make their fire too inaccurate to hit you. So you have that as an option, which is always nice. I really just like the look of this gun. I'm excited that DICE is playing around with a different damage model for a change. I really think they kind of got lazy with the damage models when designing their weapons and decided to differentiate the machine guns and their rate of fire and reload times and that kind of stuff, and then just give them all the same maximum damage value, which is weird because a lot of them fire different bullets and have different uh, properties regarding how good they should have been at ranges and whatnot. So giving them all the same damage properties just seems sort of like a lazy way of balancing weapons in this game. And I'm just glad to see a gun with totally different properties from the rest of it out there. It just makes it so much more interesting. Now I've got my other weapon reviews coming out pretty soon. Uh, this is definitely a good gun and uh, in my opinion, uh, one of the things that makes it worthwhile to probably invest in this DLC if you're already enjoying Battlefield 1. This is a very good gun, but if you don't pick up the DLC and you don't want to get wrecked by somebody with a superior weapon, the show shot isn't necessarily going to be a game changer. You'll be fine with your BAR. That'll handle itself perfectly fine in close quarters, and the other LMGs do just fine at medium range too. I like this gun a lot. I don't know if it's objectively the best LMG out there, but it's definitely Definitely in my top two. Let me know in the comments which new DLC weapon you'd like me to review next. We've got the interesting RSC for the medic. We've got a new LaBelle sniper rifle. And then we also have the Shogren shotgun. Anyway, you guys can also play this for yourself if you're not on the CTE already. It's free provided that you also bought Battlefield Premium and you have a PC at the moment. Hopefully soon for console players as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.